Good afternoon, everyone. This meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's executive order 7B. Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, Charles. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the May 2021 meeting of the Weathersfield Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, tonight, just to give a quick rundown of what we have, we have three applications to hear. And for each application, we will go through first the public hearing, which is where we will first hear the staff report that has been put together regarding the application. We will speak to the applicants. Um, the commissioners will have a chance to ask questions after the applicant has presented additional information about the application. And we'll have an opportunity for anyone who is joining the call who wishes to speak uh, in any capacity regarding any of the applications. Once we've gone through that for all three, we'll move into our public meeting. And the key point to note there is once we move into the public meeting, that is the commissioner's discussion. There's not additional testimony we take at that point. So once we've moved into the public meeting um, or it really at any point, if you're not actively um, speaking, if you're able to mute your line just to reduce background noise, that'll be really helpful. Uh, after we do that, we have minutes from our March meeting that uh, we may potentially be able to review and approve and then we'll open it up for any business not otherwise on the agenda related to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And one thing for the applicants, uh, looks like we have at least two of them present. Um, to note, we typically um, have a full slate of five commissioners present, in which case you would need four affirmative votes or four to one, your variance would be granted, three to two it would not. In this case tonight, we have four commissioners present so you would need all four affirmative votes for the variance to be granted. So with that, we want to offer the opportunity, if you so choose, to you have the opportunity to delay with no additional cost on next month's meeting if you wanted to come back at a time when we had five commissioners present. Just want to make you aware of that. If that's something you want to take advantage of, please let us know after we read your application in. Uh, and with that, um, Elizabeth, would you like to read applications or you want me to take that tonight? I can certainly do that. All right. Application number one. Application number one, number 624421, variance from section 3.7 dimensional requirements to allow side yard of 1.5 feet as against five feet minimum required to facilitate the installation of a standby generator to the western side of the building to allow aggregate side yard of 12.5 feet as against 15 feet required combined with existing 11 feet on Eastern side, residential zone B. Location 29 Dix Road, applicant Christopher Fraley. All right, it looks like we have Mr. Fraley with us. Uh, Charles, we'll start if you would please with the review of the staff report. Yes, <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. So we, the applicant is considering uh, installation of a standby generator to the western side of his um, residential building, um, as illustrated on a company flood plan. Uh, the building is currently set back <coughs> at um, five feet from the property boundary on the western side, while on the eastern side, there's 11 feet uh, <coughs> set back, excuse me making it a total of 16 feet, which um, would meet the uh, required aggregate setback of 15 feet. So with the proposed installation of a generator, which has a width of two feet and is located one foot six inches from the building, it will then be only a foot six inches from the property line. And um, since the regulations require also an aggregate setback of 15 feet from both sides together, uh, that requirement also falls short of um, four feet, six inches. So, so there we have 11 feet uh, at, at, the, um, at the eastern side. And then at the western side, no, we would end up with a foot and a half, making it 12 and a half. So then the variance is twofold. It's asking for a variance of 1.5 feet as against five feet minimum required. Then it's asking you for um, uh, <clears throat> for a variance to allow um, that would be four feet 
six inches short of the required um, aggregate setback. So staff has reviewed the proposed uh, application and has realized that uh, with the Western side having only required setback and the Eastern side combined has only uh, one foot above the required aggregate uh, as shown on the plot plan included in the application package for reference. So if the generator was to be installed on the Eastern side of the building, while achieving the minimum side yard requirement, the aggregate side yard would still be deficient. So the applicant is requesting a variance based on the hardship that um, one, the front of the house has several windows. And if the required setback from the windows was to be re realized, then uh, the front yard setback would also be compromised. And number two is that the driveway is located to the Eastern side of the house. And um, number three, the rear of the house has windows, there's a hatchway, an air conditioning condenser unit, all of which uh, would impede the placement of the generator within uh, close proximity to the building to enable the um, attachments and everything that goes with it. And um, staff has no objection to, to the granting of this variance. Uh, there has been, the sign has been posted um, within the statutory time. The notices have been sent out. There have not been any opposition from any of the neighbors. Okay. Thank you, Charles. Uh, Mr. Fraley, good evening. If you would, just uh, for the, the meeting recording, if you would just state your name and address and then tell us a little bit more about the application. Uh, my name is Chris Fraley and my address is 29 Dix Road here in Wethersfield. And uh, as Charles, you know, just discussed, the, the situation is um, my, there's a, there's a driveway on the complete west side of the house, so I don't have any option there. And the back of the house has a hatchway, several windows, and uh, an air conditioning unit. And, and I actually didn't know the rules. I thought I was going to put it right next to the air conditioning unit and would look quite nice there, but it's not, you know, not allowed. So I'm left with the uh, spot on the side of my house, the uh, west side, which is perfect, other than the fact that it's a tight lot. And uh, you know, I don't have that five feet that's, that's necessary, but, uh, talk to my neighbor. There's really just one neighbor right next door who, you know, if it was a reverse situation, I would have appreciated the same thing. I, I really explained to him what was going on and, um, he's, they're very nice people and they're like, no, that's no problem at all. Um, and, um, you know, it, it will fit very nicely there, but it, it, it just requires a variance because of the lack of footage that I have. Okay, uh, and thank you. I have a couple of questions to start and then we'll open it up to other commissioners. So the neighbor you mentioned, that's the neighbor on the west side? Yep. It would be most affected. How far back from the line is their house? Like, are you, is there still some space on their side from where the generator will be or? Yes. Okay. Yes. There's 10 feet actually. Okay. And then from looking at your house from Dix Road, is what's the visibility like of the generator placement? Is there anything that obstructs the view at all or is it straight sight line? Um, well, actually we put in, a, just last fall, we put in a, um, a rounded stone wall. And so where this is going to sit is actually block, you know, if you were directly looking from the road at my house, it will be blocked by that little bit of stone wall. So, you know, one of the things I, I'm very, I love this town and I love how people take care of their properties and, and, and really above and beyond a lot of other towns in the area. And so I'm, I'm very conscious of that. And the way this will sit, um, it's really a, just a perfect spot. You know, I don't think it's anyone will hardly even notice it, let alone be, you know, have a difficulty with it aesthetically. 
Okay, and dimensions again, if, just to make sure I'm reading right, the, the unit itself is four feet wide by two feet deep? Uh, yep. Okay. All right, let me go, uh, just I'll go around as you're appearing on my screen. Liz, did you have any questions for the applicant? I, I don't have any questions, but I am your neighbor down the street on Victor Road, and, uh, you know, I saw the sign and everything, so, and I'm familiar with the property, so, uh, you know, thanks for being here tonight. All right, thank you. Dan, any questions for this applicant? No questions for me, thank you. All right, Paul, how about you? Sorry, no questions for me. I think okay. the applicant did their due diligence. All right, Mr. Fraley, anything else uh, that you haven't covered that uh, we should know about the application? Uh, nope, I think that between Charles' report and my comments, that, that covers it. Okay. Great, thank you. Uh, Liz, and we will move on to second application. Uh, all right. Application number two, application number 6245-21, variance from section 3.7 dimensional requirements to allow side yard of 4.5 feet existing on the northern side as against five feet minimum required to, um, to allow aggregate side yard of 11 feet as against 15 feet required, 4.5 feet existing combined with 6.5 feet at generator to facilitate installation, installation of AC compressor at the southern side of the building, residential zone B, location 251 Garden Street, applicant Thaddeus and Mary Sakura. All right, thank you, Charles. Would you? Yes. Share the staff report on this one. Yes, Mr. Chairman. So, um, uh, the applicant is seeking to install a standby generator um, to the southern side of the building. Um, the generator will be located um, 6.5 feet from the property line and um, over on the northern side, there is uh, currently 4.5 feet, which is a legally non-conforming side yard as against five feet required. So that makes the aggregate side yard, um, uh, the aggregate side yard would be 15 feet required. So the aggregate side yard would be now 11 feet as against 15 feet. So basically um, the applicant initially and um, request, was requesting a variance for uh, six feet um, on this uh, side of the property. And um, but because the because the variance that he's getting, he's not really getting a side yard variance, so to speak, um, because 4.5 feet that exists over on, um, over on the northern side is already legally non-conforming. So what he's going for is a, a aggregate side yard reduction from 15 feet to 11 feet. That's a combination of that existing 4.5 plus the 6.5 feet. So since we are um, going to be looking, since the applicant is going to be looking for a variance for a, a aggregate side yard, it, it stands to reason that um, he also applies for a variance of, um, to, to regularize this existing non-conformity, so to speak. Because what, what we will have is a, is a um, if the variance is granted, what we will have is a conforming um, aggregate situation. And you, we would have the, 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 um, the variance granted and then still have the non-conforming um, situation. So, we brought this this in as a twofold application. So one, first variances for the side yard reduction from five feet to four point five for one yard, and then for the aggregate um, to be reduced to eleven feet as against fifteen feet required. Uh, the applicant has stated his hardship as um, having an existing deck in the rear of the building and um, sidewalk to the front, giving him no alternative but to um, locate the, the uh, 
the unit to this um, the southern side of the building. Uh, so basically, the, the applicant is requesting a variance for the southern side, which which is like I said before, he's reducing the aggregate from fifteen to eleven feet, and. Um, as I said, the northern side is already 4.5 feet. So um, the situation would be one which would um, regularize that existing non-conformity. And um, staff, again, has no concerns. Uh, I would recommend um, approval for this variance to be granted. Um, so far, uh, we have not had any uh, feedback from the neighbors. No, um, no neighbor expressed any kind of um, opposition to this variance being granted here on this southern side. However, I would like to point out to the board that um, there's a neighbor to the northern side that somehow misconstrued the variance application. And her exact words to me were, were that um, the applicant has, has already taken some of her land and is now um, requested more of her land. And uh, I hastened to, to you know, explain to her that the, this is not a situation where um, the applicant is requesting any, any, any land uh, and we, we here don't, we don't have that authority to um, grant persons any kind of authority to, to get it, to encroach on anyone's land, so to speak. And I explained to her that the northern side of the building, it's already 4.5 feet from this plot plan, this survey that we have here. And the side will not be affected by the um, installation of this unit here. So, um, she was not really satisfied with my answer. Um, she, she thought that there was some kind of encroachment going on. And I, I told her that if there was any encroachment, she would have to take that with the, um, with the applicant. And it, it is clear from the plot plan that there's no form of encroachment going on as far as we know. Um, so um, that's the situation. So she, had visited the town hall offices and went to the town manager's office and um, myself and uh, the another one of the building inspectors spoke with her and we explained exactly what, what, what was happening. Um, she kind of accepted it reluctantly. So I, I asked her if she wanted to um, speak at the, um, in the public hearing tonight, and she said that she would um, very much like to bring her concerns to the to the public hearing. So um, I have her telephone number, so I can let when it comes around to the public um, speaking section, I can let her voice be heard. Okay, thank you, Charles. Um, one clarifying question: This is an air conditioner unit or a generator on this one? This is a generator, actually. This is a, okay. I think the paperwork referenced air conditioner condenser unit in the packet that we have. Um, but uh, maybe more to the point, are, are the applicants present for the meeting? As a matter of fact, um, let me, I rather misinformed you, Mr. Chairman. It's a, it's an, air conditioning compressor unit, okay. not a generator this time. And um, have you heard from the app? I, I don't see, I think I've got everybody in view on my screen. I don't see that we have the applicant present. Um, I think I saw him earlier on. I know the applicant is not, here, but let me let me see if I can um, contact the applicant and uh, 
All right. Um, and Charles, while you're doing that, I'm going to uh, go back to a step that uh, I missed just for the record with the first application. Do we have anybody on the line who wished to speak on behalf of the first application, either in favor or in opposition? And no. not, not seeing Hi. anyone, I do not, uh, we will. Hello, Mr. That Sikora. Hi. Hi, I noticed that you have not been um, able to log on to. Okay, something went wrong. But anyways, um, we will try and see how much we can um, accommodate you via telephone. So you're now um, coming out of my cell phone speaker and um, the commissioners will um, hopefully hear you um, so over to you then, Mr. Chairman. All right. Good evening, Mr. Sikor. Can you hear me okay? This is David Gustafson. Yes, I can hear you. My wife is married. Is you here with me? Hi, All right. Hi, good morning. Or good evening, I should say. <laughs> Sorry, getting ahead yeah. of myself. Um, if you would, just uh, for the record, if uh, you both could just give us your name and address for okay, our transcript. Thaddeus and Mary Sikora, 251 Garden Street, Weathersfield, Connecticut, 06109. All right, thank you. And uh, we just heard before he dialed you, Charles gave us his uh, staff report on your application. So we're into the public hearing portion and uh, we'd like to give you first the, well, first, since I believe you were not with us earlier, um, we have four commissioners present tonight. The rules of the Zoning Board of Appeals require that there are four affirmative votes for variance to be granted. Typically we have five voting members, but we are short one tonight. So with that, you have the opportunity to, if you choose to delay um, without penalty and have your application heard at our next meeting. So just want to make sure you're aware of that opportunity. Um, if you wish to do that, or you want to keep moving forward this evening? Well, if you I'd like to move forward. Okay. Perfect, thank you. Um, so what I'd like to do is give you first the opportunity to just walk us through um, high level summary of the application, and then we'll have an opportunity for the commissioners to ask you some questions. Sure, uh, basically what it is, uh, we wanna put in a central air conditioner um, and the condenser unit would be go on to the side of the house, but because we only have a total of 15 feet, uh, you know, including you know, four and a half on one side, 10 and a half on the other side for a total of 15 feet. And the, uh, the condenser unit will take off, will take take about uh, four four feet. So that would leave us with like uh, 11 feet or so. And so that's uh, that doesn't meet the 15 feet requirement. So that's why we're asking for the zone variance. Okay, um, a couple of questions, if I remember correctly, this is the south southern side of the house. Uh, yes. Okay, the neighbor who's most directly impacted, so that you share a side yard with on the southern side, have you had conversations with that neighbor about the application? Yes, I did. I talked to her. Um, the neighbor is not there. She's deceased. The daughter owns the house. She lives in Georgia. I texted her and she said she received the letter. She has no problem with it. Her only comment was, why did we wait so long to put in central air? <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, from from living in Georgia, as I did for a couple of years, I can understand that sentiment if she's down there now. Um, right. The uh, so that that property and and I, I don't expect you have the exact measurements. Do you? Can you give us a sense of just how far then uh, from the side their house actually is? Uh, total from my house to their house. Uh, um. Or from the from the line to their house. I'm just thinking how how close are we putting this house, unit? It's probably the same. It's probably about four feet. Okay. We're close All right. over here. Got it. Got it. And uh, just from as you look at the house from Garden Street and then the, on the south side where the unit would be placed, uh, is it is there anything that um, obstructs the view of the condenser, or is it visible from the road we, potentially we have a beautiful forsythia bush that would obstruct the view I mean, okay. obstruct the 
view from the street. Yeah. Right. Would hide the, the condenser. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to move around the horn then to the other commissioners as I see you on screen this time. Dan, first, any questions? No questions from me. Thank you. Thank you. Paul, any questions from you? No questions from me. All right. Elizabeth? No questions from me. All right. Uh, and we have the information. We've got diagrams, which are appreciated. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Sikora, anything else that uh, we haven't covered that you want to share with us about the application? We're good. We're good. Nothing okay. I mean, it's pretty clear cut. Appreciate your help and time. All right. Thank you. And uh, I don't see that we have anybody else on the line, Charles, but you did mention that there was some potential oh, feedback yes. with this application. Um, that's correct. So let me hang up this call from, from the Sikoras, and then I will get back to you if necessary. So. Um, okay, yeah, you'll reconnect with them then when we get to the public meeting. Yeah, so um, Mavis Murphy. So Charles, just a, a question since um, we're having connectivity issues, do you wanna give the Sikoras any information about the feedback that we're about to hear or the, did you connect, okay. did you okay. disconnect them already or are they yes, still on? Yes, I've I, I disconnected them already. Oh, okay, all right. Um, are they aware of this? I'm just- they are, typically... they are aware, they are aware of the concern from the neighbor, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm just saying it typically if we were all together in the room, obviously they'd be able to hear the uh, feedback directly. Hello, good afternoon, Miss Murphy. My name is Charles Morrison. I'm the zoning enforcement officer from the town of Wethersfield and we did um, have a conversation a couple of days ago. We are in the, we are in the zoning board of appeals um, public hearing today, as I told you we would. And, um, the, applicant, the application for the variance is now being heard. So um, there's a public um, se session where you you may um, speak, uh, you know, you may express your, you may express your concern. Since I have you, I did give you the calling information and I didn't hear from you, but since I have you on the line, you're at, I'm actually talking to you through my cell phone. I can put you on speakerphone and the board can hear your concerns. Would you like to voice in it? Oh, okay, so I put you on momentarily, okay? You're on. Okay, hello, Mavis Murphy here. Hi, Ms. Murphy, David Gustafson. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, we understand you had some feedback with regard to an application we just heard. Um, so, yeah, sorry. We um, understand you have some feedback for an application we just heard for uh, 251 Garden Street. So if you would, uh, just for the record, give us your name and address, and then uh, please share your feedback on that application. Do you want my name? Is that what you want? I didn't hear you. Yes, please. I'm sorry. Yeah, if you could just give us your name and address and then. Sure. Okay. My name is Mavis K. Murphy, 261 Garden Street, Wethersfield, Connecticut. Okay. And can you share with us the feedback that you wanted to provide related to the application yes. we have for 251 Garden Street? Yes, uh, I'm not in agreement as there is a discrepancy in the distance of, to the boundary on the uh, south side, I mean, the north side, which is my property. Okay, discrepancy on the boundary. Uh, so the, the application that's in front of us is for a, uh, a an air conditioner unit on the south side. So the opposite side from you? I, I live on the opposite side. I'm not, I'm not a discrepancy. I don't have a discrepancy. I don't have an issue with number two. The issue is variance number one, the allowed side yard of 4.5 feet 
I am, I'm not in agreement and there's a discrepancy in the distance to the boundary. Okay, so. Uh, uh, the north side towards 261 Garden Street. Okay, so what we've heard uh, is that their, their existing side yard is four and a half feet on that northern side. You're saying it's not really four and a half feet? No, it's not. It's three and a half feet, and there is a, um, a survey that was done in nine. It was, my survey was done, let's see, I have it right here, at 514, 2016. There was an encroachment. Um, um, they encroach on my property, and um, so, so that is why I am um, saying this is a discrepancy. So I'm not in agreement because they don't have four and a half feet. Okay, Charles, um, can you shed any light from the staff perspective um, as to the discrepancy? I believe in your report you indicated it was four and a half feet. Certainly. Um, on the plot plan submitted that we got from our street file, um, this was done by Russell J. Carlo, registered land surveyor, number 8156. And um, this, this is showing a 4.5 foot setback from the property line on the northern side. And it is set four and a half feet plus or minus because they had an existing sidewalk there. And this this uh, survey was uh, made on December 14th, 1986. Yeah. My survey was completed on, um, uh, what did you say, April 26, 2016. So there's a discrepancy right there. So... Charles, is the town aware of the 2016 survey that she's referencing? No, uh, to the best of my recollection, we have nothing on file that shows that. Um... Oh, the permit is, yes, my, my survey is on file. Oh. It was filed, it was filed and, and I told you that Charles, and you said that it wasn't necessary to look at my survey or the property line. It was, it was I have the property, survey certificate um it was filed on um uh, let's see map 2940 and 92619 at 826 a.m all right ms murphy can i ask you a question when you reference encroachment is there a structure that is encroaching into that space well, or there, you just a, think there's a driveway I'm, I'm sorry it goes it's just it's a matter of like six inches and then goes all the way down to the back and there's some of his trees around it and um so i mean i don't have any problem him putting in a, a, a air conditioner on the other side it can't be put on my side on the, the the north side of his house because he has he has a um i guess you know i haven't they haven't spoken to me about it so i have no idea what their situation is truly but all i know is that there's um <clears throat> i i'm not in agreement and if i have uh, attorney sean clark if anybody would like to speak with him they can call him for further information So, so is there a, is there, a question? Yeah, go ahead, Elizabeth. Yeah, so this is the issue here is this is a a I can't hear you. The the issue here is that this is a existing legally non-conforming side yard, right? Whether it's four and a half feet or three and a half feet, it's a existing legally non-conforming side yard, correct? Is so, that more for that's for Charles, yeah. Um, my home phone, my cell phone would have been clearer. I don't, I don't know what you're saying. And the, and the, um, the uh, I don't know what you're asking me. Yeah, Ms. Murphy, actually, sorry, that question is uh, more directed for Charles from the town perspective. So oh, okay. Um, okay. the, Thank so you. Charles, 
the, to repeat the question, um, the existing, whether it's four and a half or three and a half, it's a legally non-conforming um, situation on that side of the house, right? On the northern side, Charles? Yes, yes. Okay. So, so uh, unless, unless um, after the survey was done, um, there was some kind of addition or extension to the building that made it go closer to the property line, then that would be another matter. But if this is the survey that was done, then the original horse is here on this plot plan, and we have four and a half feet, then I mean, I don't see how that became less than 4.5 feet without an extension. So what we could do is get the, um, we could get her information here from her surveyor and see what they actually have. And um, I will double check with the tones uh, files to see if we, to see what really constitutes that reduction from 4.5, because there must be something that um, would have uh, contributed to that reduction from 4.5 to what it is now. Three, she's saying. She's saying that she's saying three. Something. Yeah. So you, you're Miss Murphy. You're estimating three and a half is the is the distance from your perspective. Well, yes, it, it's it's okay. really three and a half, and he's saying four and a half. And right. he and I had a conversation about that, and they said, "Oh well, because they put that there because they had an existing sidewalk on there, and because of the zoning laws and whatever." And so they agreed that it was correct. But they there's but when they put their application in, Charles gave me a copy of this old plan here, and it. You know, from 1986. So, you know, I had my property surveyed only because I have a, I had a new puppy and I wanted to put a fence in. In order to put the fence in, I needed to have my property surveys. Plus, I knew that there, I, I knew anyway. So, I needed to have it. I needed to have, a, you know, a, a legitimate survey that was certified for my property. And I told them about that. So, I mean, so, I don't I ask, have a problem with them putting their air conditioner on the other side. It doesn't really affect me. What affects me is to say that they have more property on my side, which they don't. So I, I'm, um, so anyway, so, I don't know what you guys do about that. I've never been involved in something like this. So it's, that's my, that's my thing. That is why I'm not in agreement. Okay, Ms. Murphy, can I ask if you can hear me? I, I have two questions and I want to see if any of the other commissioners have questions for you. Um, if their application had been submitted and reflected three and a half feet on that side, would you have had an issue with that application? Or is there some... What's that? Their application is saying... Um, minimum side jar, they tore out minimum side jar, four and a half feet against five feet. They have, and I don't know the word, it's just that they, so they need a minimum and a half feet. But, you know, um, I, I don't know, the, the survey says that it was three and a half feet. So, um, okay. you know, when it goes so down to the property, it goes, it goes down, you know, in more on the property. So, you know, I'm not an engineer. I have the paperwork and I call. So bottom line is, if if this is an agreement, do they now own that property? What what is? Um, I'm not out to. <laughs> yeah. So well, here here's my uh, my last question for you, and then like I said, I'll open it up to others. Um, you referenced having an attorney uh, for this. Is is there some legal remedy that you are seeking? from them for that side of the house? No, I'm not seeking a legal, no, I don't know what you mean by that. But well, I mean, are you, I mean, are you? I'm just letting them know, I'm letting you people know that that's not correct. That's all. Okay. And, and I'm not, I'm looking for, I don't know what he's looking for. He never came to me. 
Yeah, well, they're, they're looking for the the air conditioner unit on the other side of the house. And to do... Well, that's and, fine. That's fine. They can do that. doesn't affect me. Okay. But why did they ask for more on my side? Why did they ask for another, you know, why would they need that? Yeah, and, and they don't for this. And so I don't know if that's maybe where uh, there's been some, maybe they were created some confusion they're not asking for additional on your side of the house now if the you know if the distance they put on the application is in dispute that may not be for our board to resolve but they're not asking for any change on your side of their house um it, the, yeah, the reason it, sell my house and, and there's going to be this thing you know it's just like i don't want to complicate my life to give them Six feet, six inches of my property. It's not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I understand your concern. I just want to make sure we're clear that their their application, the, the reason your side of the, that the um, northern side of the house, which you share that side yard with them, the reason that yeah. comes into play is because of the total aggregate side yard requirements for their property. But there's nothing in the application that changes anything about your side of their house okay the only thing is is there's a discrepancy they're saying that it's more than it's less so right. it, and, and so then i don't know if i have to deal with that a separate issue write a letter and and have your your people look into that i'm not quite sure what i have to do my my attorney um was going to, you know, he was going to represent me tonight, and it's not necessarily I can represent myself if it's not as big as I, it's not, six inches is not a big deal, it's not about that, it's about um, the neighborly thing to do that wasn't done. <laughs> and okay. uh, bottom line is, you know, there's an encroachment, and it's like, you know, I didn't say, you have to move this, you have to move that, it's six inches. And bottom line, if they're trying to carry, get that back. Anyway, it's, 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 um, I don't really want to address that now. It's, it's something else. But the bottom line is, he's saying he has four and a half. He doesn't have four and a half. He's got three and a half. So, you know, there's a discrepancy there. That's all I, that's all I can talk about. That's all I know. And, okay. uh, and the distance, you know, the, you know, the, the distance, the distance, Weaponry in the distance to the boundary. So if that, you know, I have to speak for myself. And the bottom line is, you know, hopefully it doesn't stop their air conditioning from going on. It shouldn't because it's going on the other side. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I definitely appreciate your Hi. feedback. And um, I want to take a minute just to make sure we give other commissioners the opportunity to ask questions. So uh, just Dan, quickly, did you have any questions for Ms. Murphy? No questions for me. Thank you. Thank you. Paul, any questions? No questions for me. All right. And Elizabeth, anything else? Uh, nothing else. Okay. All right. Uh, so, Ms. Murphy, I think you've done a, a, we thank you. You've done a nice job of explaining uh, your position and um, and what the issue is from your perspective. Is, mm -hmm. there any, is there anything else you'd like to share with us that we haven't covered? No, no. I just would like your name. I don't know your name. Oh, I'm, I'm, my name is David. I'm David Gustafson. Oh, David Gustafson? Yes. GTF. Okay, thank you. Sorry. All right, thank you so much. On the record, I appreciate it. All right, thanks Have for joining us. Have you ever noticed about this? Um, yeah, Charles, can, Charles will be the... Be, the notice will be published in the newspaper, but... Um, well, since so, I'm affected so, by it, don't you so, think I should get something? The, 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 the state statutes require that we we publish the result of this meeting. So whether whatever happens, whether the variance is granted or not, it will be published in the newspaper. You will not get a notification directly. The only person that will get the notification directly is the applicant. But it will be it will be published in the newspaper that the variance was granted. If it if the variance is granted, it will be published that the variance is granted as um. As applied, as applied, yeah. And and Charles, just but there's a discrepancy. Um, yeah. So 
Charles, can maybe you just provide uh, and clarify what um, her best contact would be for questions after our meeting tonight? Okay, okay, I, I get it. Okay, that's fine. Now I hmm. can put this to rest for today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you for joining us. Okay, thank you, bye-bye. All right, um, Charles, did we have any other feedback on this application? No, and- um... All right, and we have no one else uh, who's joined us, joined the call, it doesn't look like. I, I mean, if, uh, if, so. the board, if the board go ahead and grants this variance, um, it really would not affect the, 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 the unit. Um, what yeah. she says is a discrepancy. And it's not an encroachment per se. She just has a, she thinks she has a discrepancy regarding the side yard setback. Okay, we, we, why don't we uh, pick up more when we get to the yes. public meeting discussion. If we could re read the third application, please. Okay. Number three, application number 624621, variance from section 3.6A1. Accessory buildings and structures to allow accessory building in the side yard residential zone A, location 210 Broad Street. Applicant JPCL Associates LLC, care of Peter Liam Bruni. I that right. All right, Charles, uh, do you have a staff report for this one you can share? Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. So the applicant is seeking to construct an accessory building, which is a uh, the garage uh, in the side yard. As a matter of fact, it would be pretty much on the line straddling the side yard and, and the rear yard. Um, staff has reviewed the proposed request for the variance and has found that the, um, according to map submitted by the applicant, the 100 year flood boundary encompasses the entire rear and side yards. In actual fact, the property for the most part is sitting in the 100 year uh, flood area. Also, the wetlands take up approximately 50% of the rear yard. Um, based on this, um, the applicant is requesting a variance to permit the location of the garage within the side yard. Um, and the applicant has stated his hardship as regular lot configuration not conducive to the placement of a detached garage and two water funding and drainage issues on the property. Um, the applicant was informed that because of the proposed location of the garage, a wetlands permit would have to be obtained before the building permit can be issued. So I, we had discussion with the um, the town engineer, he was at the counter at the time of Mr. Um, Mr. Liam Bruni's visit, and uh, he kind of uh, explained to Mr. Liam Bruni what the requirements was as it relates to the floodplain and the wetlands, and um, there would have to be some kind of construction uh, with the garage in order to for it to meet the. Um, requirements of the engineering department that would be submitted to the wetlands board and they would review that and um, for the for the building application. There is a flood plan that was submitted and it should be in your packet showing the existing house and um, where the proposed garage would be located. It's um, and the lots in these areas are it's configured it's configured so so um, in such a way that um, pretty much any side of the yard the house could be the rear yard. Um, as a matter of fact, um, the the corner of the of the house the the, the the northern corner of the house is pointing to like the middle of the. Um, rear yard delineation of that 40 foot rear yard and the um, 10 foot side yard on one side and 13 foot side yard. So if you look at the, 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 the new proposed garage, you'll see where it lies. Um, the section of it is in the rear yard, as I said, and the section is in the side yard. Um, staff has no issue with the, um, 
with this application and would uh, recommend approval uh, subject to the uh, wetlands review being granted. And um, that's pretty much what I have. All right, thank you, Charles. And it looks like we have the applicant with us. Uh, sir, if you would please just uh, give us your full name, make sure we are um, in fact pronouncing it correctly and uh, your address for the record. And then uh, tell us what, uh, what else you'd like us to know about the application. Please unmute yourself, Mr. Liam Bruni. I can't seem to unmute, okay, let me. If you can hear me, Mr. Liam Bruni, can you? Hello there, yeah, I, can, I can hear. This is a Mark Liam Bruni, uh, Peter's son. Okay. Let me see, I'm just gonna reach out to him and see if he has any technical difficulties and uh, just stand by for one moment. Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, hello. Yes. So um, they're having trouble rejoining the Zoom meeting. So I'm just going to give them the information to call in. <clears throat> um, if you need to move forward, that's fine. Otherwise, if you could wait another 30 seconds, they should be on. Okay. Uh, we can um, we can wait for them to rejoin. Um, Thank you. Just looking at the diagrams, this certainly uh, I think wins tonight's prize for most unusual lot. Did I count seven sides to this <laughs> configuration? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, just give me one moment. I'm gonna be talking with them now. Okay. Okay, um, have them on another phone here on speaker and uh, I'm gonna try to have them talk uh, to you right now. Just one moment. Okay. Okay, you should be able to hear them now. Can you hear each other? Uh, good evening, Mr. Uh, and Bernie, can you hear me? I think you both talked at the same oh. time, but <laughs> All right, go go ahead, please. If you would just uh, we we heard Charles's report on your application, and uh, what we'd ask now is if you can just uh, please, for the record, state your name and address, and then walk us through what you'd like us to know about the application. Okay, uh, this is Peter and Janet Liam Bruni. Uh, we own that property through uh, an LLC that. Uh, we also are part of the LLC, the actual owner of the property is JPCL. So the application is through JPCL. Uh, this property was uh, right next door to us. We cut off part of our property about 14 years ago and put in a house. Uh, and at that time, 
uh, for a couple of reasons, we never built the garage. Uh, one of the reasons was that that area was always wet. And we wanted to see what we could do with drainage over time. And we had put in a drainage system to try to alleviate some of the water problems, which sort of worked, but didn't work that great. Uh, and that needs to be totally upgraded, uh, number one. So one of the issues is we have to do a, some site work there to, to kind of alleviate the water ponding. And the way this lot is configured, as you can see, it's not a real lot, but it's kind of tucked back from the street quite a bit behind the green and kind of dog legs uh, behind our neighbor. Uh, I'm not sure exactly the number there. I think he's 220. Yeah. And <clears throat> anyways, the lot was challenging as it was in the beginning to try to define what was the front yard, the backyard, and the fact that it's a weird configuration. But we went with a recommendation at the time of uh, the commission, you know, to set the sidelines and the back lines as we did. Uh, where we want to place the garage is a fairly flat, dry area. It's, it's the right place to put it. It's right next to the house. It will look like, you know, it's adjacent to the house. Makes for easy entry of people in and out with groceries and so forth. And it's along, it's just above the drainage area that that we want to build. We, we, we'll have to put some French drains from, from the front of the house that goes between the garage and this uh, house that's there now and leading to the back. Placing the garage in the back area is geometrically possible. You, you can do it. Uh, you can fit it, but because of the water problems and the, and the lay of the land there, and then it starts infringing on wetlands back there, uh, I don't think it's the right thing to do. So we would like to put it on the side uh, as shown in uh, in the picture there. Uh, we want to figure the driveway. Yeah, and the, you know, the driveway will have to be reconfigured to make it work as well. Did, did you hear what I said? Okay, I, I don't know if this is working out. No, I did, yes, thank you. Um, heard you fine. Uh, we'll, um, if you can hear us, okay, we're going to go through and uh, see. I've got a couple of questions to start, and then we'll pass it to other commissioners. So if I'm reading the diagrams correctly, and thank you for the, the context and the dog leg around 220. Um, 220 is the neighbor. That's the side and the portion of the yard that will be closest. The garage will be closest to 220. Is that right? Yeah, his name is Raj. Uh, I'll never pronounce his last name correctly, but uh, okay. I do know I do know Raj quite well. I spoke to him a number of times about this. Uh, as a matter of fact, today I went out with Raj and we measured uh, how far his house is from the, the side property, the sideline there. Uh, so we want to put ours six feet from that sideline. His house is is kind of skewed. So one corner is 16 feet. The back corner of the house is 16 feet from the sideline. Front corner of the house is 40 feet. So, you know, okay. at, at the closest point, it's going to be 16 and 6. It's going to be 22 feet between the two houses. At the furthest point, it's going to be, uh, you know, 6 and 40, 40, 16. So there's, there's space in between. He's okay with it, you know, uh, because it's quite a bit of distance there. Okay. All right. You, you read my uh, second question is whether you had spoken with him. So I appreciate that context. Um, can you just give a sense of then the view from Broad Street? So where the uh, structure will be placed, I assume it's going to be readily visible from Broad Street. Uh, am, I make, am I reading that part correctly? Uh, actually not. Uh, okay. The, 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 the property has, um, uh, if you're standing right at Broad Street looking straight on, since the house is tucked in that dog leg and there's a bunch of trees there, we left all the trees naturally, and we're going to keep the trees. You okay. actually won't see the house behind the trees. 
in the winter and the fall when there's no leaves, if you if you look at an angle, not straight on from the street, but kind of an skewed angle, you 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 will be able to see the house and the garage next to it tucked in the dog lake. Okay. All right. I'm going to um, go around the horn to see. Uh, let me check in with the other commissioners. Elizabeth, any questions for the applicant? I don't have any questions. All right. Dan? Just one question. Does this need to go in front of the Historical Society or Historical Committee? Uh, absolutely. Uh, the house that uh, is in there is a salt box. I actually... Uh, built it similar to one of the salt boxes that Don Robbins would have in which we liked. Uh, so attaching the garage to it wouldn't look right anyway. So that's why we, we always intended on putting a detached garage from the salt box. And it will have the characteristics of like a carriage house, which which was similar to what was there in the old days, I'm sure, in many of these houses. So that's what we intend to do. But historic district will have to approve that design and give us the okay. Okay. If we have approvals from you, that's the next step, I would imagine. Okay. Dan, did that cover what you needed? Yep, and he answered my uh, first question that he's going to keep the trees there as well. So thank you. <laughs> all right. Paul, any questions for this applicant? No, I uh, answered all mine. I'm good. Okay. Um, and Charles, just a clarifying question for you, if I can. Um, the structure itself, there's no... Um, there's no variance that needs to be considered. The structure itself is fine. It's just strictly the placement that we're addressing, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so, Mr. and Mrs. Lambruni, anything else you want to share with us? No, no, I appreciate you guys being patient. Uh, for some reason, we tried every avenue to get in, you know, Zoom, uh, Google, and the phone. And in all three cases, we got a waiting mode that we're not able to get in. There was another commissioner, Sandy. Sandy Willibad has been trying to get on as well. Yeah, yeah. we were both kind of stuck <laughs> in this, in this <laughs> ether space and we couldn't get in. So she's probably still trying to get in. Somebody should give her a call and let her know what happened. Okay, thank you for that heads up. And now we appreciate everybody's patience. This is certainly, uh, you know, a, a still, we've been doing this for many months, but it's still a work in progress. And I know we all look forward to being able to get back into the uh, council chambers for a meeting at some point soon. Um, all right, Charles, did we have anyone else? Was there any feedback you had received related to this or anybody else who wished to provide feedback on this application? I, I, I tell you, Mr. Chairman, um, a gentleman, I think he's a neighbor. He lives in somewhere within that radius. I think he did get one of the letters or, um, but he had left me a voicemail to say that um, he was requesting a copy of the application. And somehow I had um, failed to, to get to, to him before today. But luckily in the last minute, I realized that um, I did not um, grant his request by sending him the. So I hastened to send him the application, the full packet of the application. And so um, just to make sure I asked him if he wanted to speak um either for you know against if he had any comments for the comment section so that we could get him on here this evening and then um he asked me what about the winery where the winery was going so um i told him that to the best of my recollection the, the, this was not a winery but a garage and he said well oh then i'm fine as long as it's not a winery <laughs> he said as long as it's not a winery then, then i'm good no 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 problem so, so i yeah, I don't know if Mr. Um, Lembrone had any um, plans prior to this of the winery or anything, <laughs> but he came up with that. So that's a different property. Yeah, ah. the, 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 vine, the vineyard is um, is on our property. It's not part of this property, and okay. it's about an acre of uh, of vines. And it's it's a private thing that myself and Mark, who's on this phone, uh, do for enjoyment. So if you ever got an old letter spirit want to taste our wine, feel free to stop in, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Um, so 
I just want to do one last check, uh, commissioners. Any questions on for any of the applicants? And you can I can see all of you, so you can do a nod or shake of the head. Looks like everybody's declining. Um, any of the applicants before we close the public hearing and move into our public meeting? Anything else that um, we need to take into account? I'll give a few moments or a few seconds. Okay, not hearing anything. Um, thank you all to the applicants for uh, walking us through your applications at this point. I would like to ask one of the commissioners for a motion to close the public hearing and move to our public meeting. Motion to close public hearing and move to public meeting. I second. All right, thank you, Paul and Dan. All in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. Aye. <laughs> All right, all opposed. Okay, we have closed the public hearing. We'll move to public meeting. And just a reminder to the applicants, this is the point where the commissioners discuss and we will come to vote. All four of us um, has, have to vote in favor for the uh, variance to be granted. And uh, just to clarify, this is not a point where we take additional testimony. So please stay with us and join us. Um, and But uh, we do not take additional input at this point. So with that, uh, Elizabeth, if you would read us so we can start the public meeting with regard to the first application. Application number 164421, variance from section 3.7, dimensional requirements to allow side yard of 1.5 feet against five feet minimum required to facilitate the installation of standby generator to the Western side of the building. To, uh, to, to allow aggregate side yard of 12.5 feet as against 15 feet required combined with existing 11 feet on eastern side, residential zone B. Location 29 Vicks Road, applicant Christopher Fraley. All right, commissioners, does anyone want to open up discussion? I'll make a motion to approve it. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second it. All right, so look, I've got the motion from Elizabeth, second from Dan was the first I heard. Uh, all in favor of approving the variance? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, the variance passes four to zero. Mr. Fraley, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, you're welcome to stick around if you'd like to. We will move on now to the second application. Application number 624521, variance from section 3.7, dimensional requirements to allow side yard of 4.5 feet existing on the northern side as against five feet minimum required to allow aggregate side yard of 11 feet as against 15 feet required, 4.5 feet existing combined with 6.5 feet at generator to facilitate inst installation of an AC compressor at the southern side of the building, residential zone B. Location 251 Garden Street. Applicant Thaddeus and Mary uh, Sakura. And Charles, do we have them did you want to get them back on the line so they can hear our discussion of their application? Okay. Hello, Mr. Sakura. Speaking. Charles Morrison here with the yeah, yeah, Zoning yeah. Board of Appeals back with you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Morrison, this is David Gustafson. We just, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Sakura. It's been a, been a long night already. Um, yeah. We wanted to make sure we looped you back in and re reconnected you so you could hear our discussion during the public meeting stage of, um, of our overall meeting tonight. And so just to clarify, we've heard the testimony previously, and this is the portion now where the commissioners discuss and, and we will come to vote. So we don't take additional testimony, but we wanted to make sure you could be on the line to hear us as we go through discussing your application. Sure. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to start discussion here. Uh, and Charles, I have a question just based on the 
the testimony we heard regarding actually the opposite side of the house and what that actual distance may be in terms of side yard, um, that there wasn't any objection to the, the, the heart of the application, which is the variance needed for the, the air conditioner unit. And so my question, Charles, I don't know if we have an answer for this, but if we were to approve as submitted and then later there was something that came up, you know, independent of this variance that determined that the side yard information submitted was incorrect. What, what is the next course of action if that were to play out? Um, so we approve as submitted if it turns out that the side yard is different from what was approved, does it have to come back to us for an additional review and variance? Uh, what would happen here is that um, the, the, if it was approved as submitted, then um, for the records, it would have to be stated that um, it, it would have to be stated that there's there's a 4.5 um, feet uh, side yard, you know, um, combining with um, with the southern side to make it 11 feet. So um, it seems to me that if that 4.5 was changed for any reason to, to even a lesser amount, um, then quite possibly it would have to um, go back to the Board of Appeals to ratify that um, situation to say that then um, it was actually, you know, four feet as against 4.5 or whatever the case may be. But the, 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 the meat of the matter, like you pointed out, Mr. Chairman, is the, is the placement of the, um, the condenser at that southern side, thus reducing the, um, thus reducing the, the, the aggregate side there. Um, and, and my department does not, and the Board of Appeals does not usually get involved with trying to figure out uh, property boundaries. You know, that's not really our part, but it, but it can become a civil matter, can become a legal issue um, between both neighbors. And then we are pretty much um, caught in the middle, so to speak. And then um, we would have to, like I say, we would probably, they would probably have to go back to the Board of Appeals, no doubt. Okay. To, to, to that. Yeah. All right, thank you. That's helpful for me, um, just thinking through. I mean, it seems to me that we can, yeah, we, we can, operate and, and work with the information as it's presented to us and can't speculate as to uh, right. other other items there. So your your answer helped me with what I need. So um, any other questions or comments from other commissioners on this application? All right, I'm seeing shaking heads. So um, I so, will, yeah, go, Paul. So, go ahead. Chair, if I, so, Charles, if I'm understanding you correctly, um, you're saying that um, currently the, the way this application is submitted, it's stating that there is 4.5 feet of uh, side yard setback. However, we had mm -hmm. the neighbor that's saying it's indeed 3.5. So, if there was some form of discrepancy, let's say, um, for whatever reason, if the property was resurveyed and it was indeed 3.5 that the applicant would have to come back to mm -hmm. us for a new variance. Am I correct on that? Yeah, um, I, I don't want to say he has to um, apply for a variance again, but um, I'm thinking in the line on the, along the lines of simply um, ratifying it, making it you know, um, going from 4.5 to, 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 uh, to whatever it is, just to, to, to accommodate that 6.5 on, on the other side. So that we, that's for the records, we will have a, you know, um, there's something that has to be done and I'm not, 
I don't want to say I'm absolutely sure that there's there have to be another application, but somehow it has to come before the board. For our okay. So, but for Mr. us to chair, if I if I may, through you, um, please, Paul. There, there is two. Uh, my hangups here are um, is first of all that part um, whether or not the applicant would have to go back through the process and resubmit an application to me um, is um, where I'm, you know, that's a bit of a, you know, swaying on that one, but even more so more seriously is uh, the idea as to whether or not there was supposed to be some form of legal ramification as it relates to the neighbor and how would the town be caught in this? How would the board be um, dragged into this? Because we, uh, uh approved or didn't approve an application that um could be now used either uh some form of evidence to say oh yes like as if we were um putting a rubber stamp to that to say that the, um it was indeed 4.5 and so i mean that part there I, isn't too clear yeah so, i understand I'm sorry, Paul, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. I, I was going to say, I understand the hesitancy there, but I also, uh, and perhaps, you know, could be argued I'm splitting hairs on this one, but what we're being asked to memorialize is a, an allowance of that variance of four and a half feet, and then the six and a half feet on the other side for the air conditioning unit for that total of 11. Um, it seems beyond our ability to evaluate and assess and, and hypothesize as to whether something may, yeah, may change in that amount and, and it needed to be something different. So what we're, I think from my perspective, we have to evaluate the application as it's been submitted and the request and, and the variance that's needed is the four and a half and the six and a half for a total of 11. Uh, and if something comes up, after the fact that indicates that those um, parameters are not being met, then yeah, that's a, a we, we, I don't know that we're gonna define exactly what that next course would be if that were to happen. But I think what we have in front of us is um, fairly straightforward in terms of the dimensions as they're presented to us. So I don't know if anybody, Elizabeth or Dan, if you wanted to weigh in. Yeah, I'm surprised that this doesn't happen or as we have I mean, we grant a fair number of variances. All of them have the dimension and, and you know, measurements in them. And property disputes, boundary disputes are not uncommon. I have to imagine there have been situations where there's a boundary dispute on a lot that had a variance for some reason or another. So I don't really know what happens in those situations. I'm a little reluctant, like the chairman said, to, to hold something up over the over a hypothetical dispute that could happen, you know, down the road. She said she wasn't even, didn't even seem particularly interested in pursuing it, which I thought was interesting. Um, so I, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm sort of with the chairman on this, but I'm a little, you know, I'm, I, I'm a little surprised this hasn't come up before as to what you do with the variance when there is a boundary dispute. Does it have to, do you have to go back and correct it or refile it or anything like that? Yeah, and and I I could only I'm only speculating if I try to answer that, and I think that's part of our challenge. If I, if I may, Mr. Chairman, and, and the important thing here is that um, the neighbor did not. She seemed to be in favor. She 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 stated that she was in favor of it. She didn't object to it and said that she was not in favor of it as being granted. She was in favor of it. Her her only. Concern. Our only dispute is was is that um, it is an inch closer or something than 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 um, than is being represented. That's all. That's all, and that would not affect the variance any at all, in, in my opinion. If, if if it was found out later that it was um, three feet, you know, whatever. So yeah, I I just. I don't see anything in our entertaining the variance as it's submitted 
I don't see anything in our approving it that limits or hinders Ms. Murphy from pursuing whatever she may want to pursue. Um, and so that's kind of where I come down on it. But Paul, understanding your hesitations, but um, you know, it, to Charles's point, she was pretty clear that she wanted them to be able to go ahead and do the air conditioning uh, portion of this. And um, yeah, the, the other is a fact in dispute. Um, but again, we're approving a variance for a set amount. If that dispute ends up leading to a change in where the line is and changes the side yard, then, you know, again, I'm speculating, but that would seem to be a different variance that would be needed at that point. So, um, I don't know. Dan, I wanted to make sure I gave you a chance to weigh in. Do you have any comments or questions on this one? No, I agree with your assessment as well. All right. Um, well, then I'm in. Paul, did you get all your comments in that you wanted? I am. I, I, I think so. I mean, um, it, based on everything, um, I guess if um, we're going to go ahead with it, I, I would be okay with approving it the way it is. Okay, well, then I will um, submit a motion that we approve the variance as submitted, which to clarify is a two part submission. One is allowing the minimum side yard as stated in the application of four and a half feet on the northern side of the property against the five feet minimum requirement. And then second, allowing six and a half feet side yard on the um, southern side for placement of the AC compressor for a total approved variance of 11 feet of aggregate side yard. Um, yeah, I'll ask for a second. Okay. All right, I heard Elizabeth first on that one. So all in favor of the variance, aye. Aye. All opposed. All right, the variance is granted by a four to nothing vote. And to the Socoras, um, we have one more uh, application we're talking through, so you may feel free to stay on or um, go about your evening. Elizabeth, if you would read the third application. Application number 624621, variance from section 3.6A1, accessory buildings and structures to allow accessory building in the side yard, residential zone A, location 210 Broad Street, Applicate, applicant JPCL Associates LLC, care of Peter Liam Rooney. All right, well, I'll, uh, I'll start discussion here. This is, uh, as I said, this is definitely the winner tonight for the uh, most oddly shaped lot that we've had to look at from a plot plan perspective. And uh, placement seems to make sense uh, from everything I can see. Uh, the neighbor most immediately impacted has been consulted and uh, we heard testimony that that neighbor is okay with things uh, view is um, sounds like obstructed directly from Broad Street and I think the only consideration is that um, we yeah and this maybe goes without saying but we may want to just stipulate that um, variance is approved pending then final approval by the historic district for the plans and for, yeah. the, um, and for the wetlands as well. Yeah, good point, Charles. I'll make a motion that we approve the variance subject to approval by the Historic District Commission and the applicant obtaining a wetland permit. Second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, the variance is granted by a four to nothing vote. Um, with that, we will close out the public meeting and we have minutes, but I think we only have, uh, Charles, one commissioner who was present for the March meeting. So, oh, okay. um, I think technically we could, but I don't know if one, one person in three abstentions is a good look. So maybe we should hold off. Yeah, I was, uh, I, I'd like to move that we, uh, table approval of the March minutes until the next meeting. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, motion passed to move March minute approval to our next meeting. And with that, I believe our 
last order business is to open it up for any uh, comments on general matters of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Charles, anybody out there in the lobby waiting to give comment on general matters of the Zoning Board of Appeals? Not that I can see here. Um, no. All no. right. But any final good. comments from commissioners? All right. Well, thank you all very much for your time. Thank you, Charles. Thank you to all the applicants who joined us. And uh, we will adjourn our meeting for May 2021. Thank, thank you. you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.